What's up everyone, Mikey Bell here with Outdoor Adventure Training and today we're diving into a common issue that many hikers, trail runners, and outdoor athletes of all types face and that is IT band syndrome. In this video, we're going to cover what IT band syndrome is, why it happens, and most importantly, what you can do to prevent it or help correct it if it's something that you deal with. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the Outdoor Adventure Training YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on the latest tips and tricks for training for outdoor adventures. Before we dive into the nitty gritty of IT band syndrome, a quick anatomy lesson. If we look at the soft tissue anatomy from the lateral view, we'll start up top at the iliac crest. This is your hip bone, similar to where your backpack would rest. Just below that, we have gluteus medius, and on the anterior portion, we have the tensor fascia lata muscle. And really, this is the origin of the famous iliotibial band, or the IT band, and that connective tissue runs all the way down below the knee and inserts on the lateral aspect of the tibia. More practically, if you palpate just above your knee, there's a good chance that you'll be able to actually feel your IT band, and this should give you some awareness of where this structure is. Before we dive deeper into why IT band syndrome occurs, let's first look at what IT band syndrome is. Quite simply, it is an overuse injury that causes pain on that outside part of the knee about where that IT band crosses the knee joint and or where it inserts into the tibia. This pain or tenderness can set on early on in activity, maybe towards the end of a hike or even the next day. And ultimately it can get so severe that it's too painful to hike or run or do the activities that you love. So why does IT band occur? There's really three common variables that need to be at play for this to manifest in your body. Number one is overuse and repetition. That repetitive use over many days, months, or years can ultimately lead to IT band syndrome, particularly in hikers and runners who are flexing the hip and flexing the knee, which is what that IT band is involved in doing. The second variable is the lack of mobility training to help relieve some of that repetitive motion and overuse. This could be foam rolling or stretching, which most people avoid, and that's ultimately the number one way to keep that chronic injury and pain away. The third variable is a lack of strength training in the surrounding structures, particularly gluteus medius and the TFL muscle, which we'll talk more about later in this video. The old school rationale that you can just hike and run to get fit for hiking and running is no longer the case. We need to incorporate strength training to balance our muscle and reduce our likelihood of improper movement patterns. So let's dive into the root cause of your IT band syndrome pain. Really, it has very little to do with your IT band. Again, if we look at the anatomy of this structure, it is avascular, meaning on anatomy chart, it is white. There is no blood supply. It is actually just a very long tendon that is attached to your tensor fascia lata, which is the muscle that is ultimately contracting and relaxing. Even though your pain might be manifesting down here by your knee, that's actually not the problem at all. The problem is actually up by your TFL and your glute medius. Your glute isn't doing enough, your TFL is taking over and is doing way more of the muscular contraction than what it can actually handle, which is causing tightness all the way down that tendon, which is manifesting as pain in the lateral side of the knee. Because your IT band is actually a tendon, general mobility practices like foam rolling or stretching on that specific structure is not gonna work. In short, do not roll your IT band. Instead, focus your mobility techniques and tactics on the tensor fascia lata. This has fascia around it. You might have knots and adhesions in that TFL. And releasing some of that tension and tightness will help give you a little bit more room and freedom for that IT band to move freely. I would go so far as to say that if you have IT band syndrome, just 60 to 90 seconds of foam rolling your TFL will most likely provide immediate relief, albeit 
not lasting relief. And we'll explore how to achieve that shortly. My go-to to elicit long-term lasting mobility changes, and particularly with the TFL, is the lethal combination of self-myofascial release and static as well as dynamic stretching. Self-myofascial release can come in the form of foam rolling, focusing that attention on the TFL, which really is in that pocket between your iliac crest and the greater trochanter of your femur or your hip bone, and simply laying on your foam roller in subtle rocking motions back and forth will help alleviate some of that tension. If you're seeking more intensity with that self-myofascial release, this is where a lacrosse ball or a dense massage ball placed in that same region between the iliac crest and your hip bone can make an incredible difference in helping release that TFL. As we migrate into static stretching, a reclined TFL stretch is by far my favorite stretch to slowly open up those muscle fibers and provide lasting relief down the IT band. Stretching the surrounding soft tissue structures like the external rotators of the hips the glutes, using movements like pigeon pose or lizard, are also great to mobilize this general region, as well as the front of the hip, in the hip flexors, and even in the lateral quadriceps, which could also come in the form of foam rolling, or a lunge stretch, a couch stretch, anything that helps open up that anterior chain. Very rarely does dysfunction occur in isolation, meaning if you have IT band syndrome, there's a good chance you might have tight hip flexors or tight hamstrings or a tight lower back. And these are all regions that we need to mobilize in a holistic approach. It's not just your TFL or your IT band. It might have to do with the biomechanics of your foot or how your hip is moving as you're striding. These are all things to consider, and there are many different ways to approach this for immediate and lasting results. Releasing that tension in the TFL and mobilizing the surrounding structures is just half of the battle. We also need to focus on strengthening, and in particular, the gluteus medius is the number one muscle to focus on to strengthen to relieve pressure off of that tensor fascia lata, and as a result, reducing that IT band syndrome. The gluteus medius is actually a synergist muscle of the TFL and does some of the same actions like abduction of the hip. However, it is much stronger and also has the added support of gluteus maximus and gluteus minimus. In essence, if your TFL is working too much, your glute medius is not doing its job, and our goal with strength training is to give some of that workload to the gluteus medius. As a short rule of thumb, any exercise that engages our glutes is going to help reduce the likelihood of IT band syndrome showing up for you. So of course, exercises like a standard squat, this could be body weight, this could be holding a weight in the goblet position, even a single leg Romanian deadlift while it is working hamstrings is also very much a glute dominated exercise, as well as any variation of the glute bridge. And there are many, many variations that are all amazing at primarily targeting gluteus maximus, but gluteus medius is a synergist muscle in many of these movements. When performing any of these glute dominated exercises, it is absolutely critical that you are paying special attention to staying externally rotated. That means pushing your knees out, and that's gonna help activate that gluteus medius, which as you know now, is so critical to reduce the tension on the TFL. Another great exercise is the plate slide, where you're actively working against resistance to move that hip in an abducted position, which helps activate that gluteus medius. My favorite exercises to target the glute medius is anything that pulls my knee into a valgus position. Valgus just means inward motion. So anything that mimics that, which generally comes in the form of a band. This could include a banded split squat where I'm moving through a lunge range of motion while resisting that valgus motion. I can do the same in a reverse step up. So just moving through different ranges of motion here in a lateral band walk where I'm really focusing on that external rotation, pushing the knees out and abducting the hip as I move side to side. 
To prevent or reverse IT band syndrome, you could practice exercises like this as much as two or three times a week. In some combination, you don't need to spend hours of doing this every single day. 30 minute blocks a couple times a week should be enough to help strengthen those structures and translating that into your hiking. So while you're out on the trail, while you're on a run, think about all those same principles of staying abducted and externally rotating through the hips to keep the glute medius engaged so the TFL isn't doing all the dirty work. If you're currently dealing with some degree of IT band syndrome, you cannot mobilize too much. Try to dedicate at least 10, 20, or even 30 minutes a day to mobilizing the TFL and the external rotators, the hip flexors and quadriceps like we talked about because those muscles are so overactive. Like I mentioned earlier, the lasting mobility gains really do take time and it could take weeks or months to fully reverse this IT band syndrome. So if it doesn't go away in the first couple days of foam rolling, which it could, but if it doesn't, don't give up, keep trying, trust the process, keep mobilizing, keep strengthening, and you'll get there. So a very simplified debrief of today's episode. If you have dealt with or are worried about dealing with IT band syndrome, it's quite simple. Focus on mobilizing the TFL and the surrounding structures. Strengthen the gluteus medius in its surrounding structures. Really, it's a pretty simple recipe of mobility and strength over a period of time to give you the results that you want. If you found this video helpful, you will most certainly find our training programs helpful. Head over to OutdoorAdventureTraining.com. Really, in every single one of our programs, we focus on mitigating IT band syndrome because it is so common in outdoor athletes. All of our programs come with a seven-day free trial to get you started on your strength and mobility journey. As usual, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time here at Outdoor Adventure Training.